Hi, welcome to I Flip for Math, Math Cast. I'm Mrs. Gooding. This is our very first lesson, 1-1 Part 1 on place value. Our learning goal is use standard, expanded, and word form to write numbers. Today we're going to be focusing primarily on learning our place value positions so that all of the learning goals that come after this will be easy for us. Um, remember that in your journal you don't have to write the quote, but you do have to write down the title at the top of your journal entry. And it's also important that you write down that learning goal. Let's go ahead and begin. Our learning goals. These are the specific things in this lesson that I want you to know when you come back to school. Do your best to master them and write down any questions that you have or any help that you might need in understanding them. And we'll go over it tomorrow when you're in class. Here's our first learning goal. Know the difference between value and place value. <laughs> Memorize the place value song, verse 1. This may feel a little silly at first, but it is the best strategy I know for making sure that you get your place value positions correct. Know that we begin naming place value positions from the right end of whole numbers and then move to the left. and write large numbers putting commas in the correct places. Also, we want to make sure we know the names of the commas in each of their positions. This isn't something official. This is just a strategy we use to make sure that we're reading numbers correctly. The vocabulary that you're going to need to write in your journal today is going to begin with the word digit, which is just any number from 0 to 9. You use digits all the time. You've probably been calling them numbers up till now, but now we're going to use a little bit more of a grown-up vocabulary and call them digits. Go ahead and write that in your journal. Make sure you underline the vocabulary term digit. Value. This is how much a digit is worth based on its place or position in a number. If you need to pause while you write these down, do so and push play again when you're ready to move on to the next term. Place value. This is the name of the place where a digit is located in a number. First, we're going to focus on the difference between value and place value. Kids have a hard time with this, but if you think about the word choice, it's not that tough. The place value of a number is a little bit like its address. Think about where your house is. There's a number on your house. It might be 303 Oak Street. That's the name of where your house is located. If I asked you where your house was located, that's what you would tell me, your address. The place value position is also the number's address. It's where it's located. It doesn't include the actual number, like 1 or 3 or 5. It's just the place value position name. So it's the name of the place where the number's located on the place value chart. We generally represent place value using words like ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. The value of a number is how much it's worth. This is pretty specific. If there's a seven in the thousands place, it's going to be worth 7,000. That's specific, not just a thousand. That wouldn't equal the same thing as 7,000. So it's very specific. We usually represent this by numbers. We can write it in words, but we're usually going to see it using digits. Here's some examples of value and place value. We're going to use the number 2,475 to practice. I underlined the number in the hundreds place, so that's the number we're going to be looking at right now. The place value, remember that's the address, of the number 4 is the hundreds place. That's the place value position where the number's located. We can sing the place value song to verify this. I'll just give you a short hint of what that's going to sound like, but we'll be learning the song later. If I'm looking at the 5, and remember we always start with the right end of the number, I would sing 1s, 10s, 100s. And because I sang 1s when I looked at the 5, and 10s when I looked at the 7, and 100s when I looked at the 4, we would know that the 4 is in the 100s place, and we could stop right there. We don't even have to sing the whole song. 
The value of the number 4 isn't hundreds. 100 isn't the same as 400. The way we find out the value is, first, we know that the 4 is in the hundreds place, so we can multiply 4 times 100, which gives us 400. That's the official math way to do it, but there's a strategy that we can use, too, that might be a little easier for you. We can figure the value of the 4 by writing down the number 4. Then we're going to replace each digit that follows that with a 0. There are two digits that follow 4 in the number 2,475, the digits 7 and the digits 5. Write the number 4 and then replace the 7 and the 5 with zeros, which will give you 400. That might be a little easier for you, especially when you're looking at really large numbers. So here are our hints again with place value. With whole numbers, we're going to begin naming the place value positions from the right end of a number and move to the left. Look at this huge number. We could sing the place value position, position song to figure out how many place value positions that we actually have here. I'm going to sing all the way to the fourth. Every time I sing a different word, you're going to point to a different number. So start with your three on the right hand side. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, min, millions, ten millions, hundred millions. Oops, we got to keep going. Three billions, eight, eighty billions, four hundred billions. That is place value. That song is longer than we will probably ever have to sing for most of our numbers, since we'll usually be going to the millions. But that just gives us an idea of how we could determine what place value position each number's in. Don't laugh at my singing. I've never pretended to be a good singer. Looking at that number above, there are three digits separated by commas. Look at the first section. It says 003. So if we start from the right end and move left, we go 3, 0, 0, ones, tens, hundreds, and then there's a comma. We go three more digits over, and there's another comma. Count three more digits, and there's another comma. Each of those sets of three digits between commas are called a period, and we name those periods. The first period, 003, is the ones period. All of those um, digits are worth one each. Then we move to the thousands period. Each of those digits is going to be in the thousands period. 257 is in the millions period. And 483, that's in the billions period. We'll be using those names a lot when we're trying to identify where numbers are. Is it in the ones period, the millions period, the billions period, the thousands period, maybe even the trillions period? We're going to name those commas, too, just to help you read numbers a little bit more easily. If you look at that first comma, when we count from the right three digits over, three, zero, zero, comma, we're going to name that comma the thousands comma. So anytime we read the numbers in that period, that thousands period, we're going to follow them by the word thousands. 169, and then say the word thousand. 169,000. That was pretty easy. If we're looking in the millions period, we read those three digits like a regular number two, 257. That's easy. Then we just name the comma, millions, 257 millions. If we're reading the number in the billions period, it sounds like that would be a big number and really hard, but all we do is read those three digits just like a regular number, 483. And then we say the name of the comma, billions, 483 billions. If I read that entire number at once, I would read it like this. 483 billion, 257 million, 169,000, three. I didn't say the word and anywhere in there. Practice that when you're reading your numbers. Don't ever say the word and when you're reading a whole number. Here's our place value chart. This will help you realize the difference between the decimal side and the whole number side, but we are only looking at the whole number side for this lesson. The whole number side is going to be the periods that are yellow, green, blue, and orange. And you can see there's our ones period that's yellow, our thousands period that's green, our millions period that's blue, and our billions period that's orange. If we sing the place value song, we're starting in the ones place. You can see those decimals that are lined up right there. 
When we start in the ones place, we sing to the left. We're only going to sing to the millions place this time because that's as far as we really need to go. So the song goes like this. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions. That is place value. Rewind it and sing with me and practice it. I know you'll feel a little bit silly at first. I feel really silly knowing that I'm singing in front of you. But the truth is, I never make mistakes on my place value positions because I can always sing the song. I just taught you verse one. Later when we're doing decimals, we'll learn verse two. It'll make decimals a piece of cake. Did you know that one third of fifth graders have a hard time knowing their place value position names? Even with numbers as small as 25, you're gonna be even smarter than the average fifth grader because you'll know your place value position names because you can always sing the song. If you're in class, if you're doing homework, if you're taking a test, inside your head, you can always sing the song. Why don't you rewind it and sing it one more time? When you come to class tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to sing it all together. So let's do some practice problems. Um, in your journal, I want you to number from 1 to 8, and you're going to write in the answer. So you're going to need to pause after I read the instructions and fill in your answer and then push play again and keep going and check your answer. Number one, insert commas where they belong in the following number. Go ahead and do that now. Did you put a comma here and here and here? Good, you need to put your thousands comma here, then you count three more digits and put your millions comma there. Three more digits and put your billions comma there. Number two, which number is in the ten thousands place? Let's go ahead and look. If we sing the place value song while we're looking at those numbers, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, the eight, right there, the eight is in the ten thousands place. Number three, which number is in the tens place? Let's sing our song. Ones, tens, well that was easy. The five is in the tens place. Number four, what is the place value position of the one? Let's go ahead and see if we can sing all the way over there. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions. That's where our one is, hundred millions. Number five, what is the place value position of the two? Again, we'll sing it. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. There we go, the two is in the millions place. Number six, what is the value of the five? Remember, the value is more specific. We're going to have a specific number in our answer. It's obviously going to have the number five in it. But let's see what place value position it's in. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions. Hmm, what is five times ten million or a five in the ten millions place? That would be 50 million, so the value is 50 million. Number seven, what is the value of the zero? Hmm, the zero is in the tens place, but it's still just a zero. It doesn't have any value at all. The value is zero. It's just a placeholder. Number eight, what is the value of the six? Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, so a six in the ten thousands place is going to be 60,000. Hope you did a good job on this practice page. If you missed some, go back and watch some of the slides again. See if you can figure out why you made your mistake. Write down any questions that you still have after watching the slides again. You might even try doing the practice all over again. See if you do a better job the second time. We'll be working on it some more in school tomorrow. Finishing up today, Go ahead and review your learning goals. Make sure you've mastered all of the ones that you can. See if you need to go back and practice a review again. In your journal, make sure that you write down one or more questions that you still have from this lesson. Anything that confused you or you needed a little bit more assistance on, we'll go over that in class. If you didn't have any problems at all, you mastered everything, then try to think of a question that somebody else might have. This will just help you with your higher level thinking skills. Then celebrate. You're done with your very first lesson. You're learning how to record these in your journal 
and you're helping be in control of your learning. That's exciting. You've completed Lesson 1-1, Part 1, Place Value. See you tomorrow.